There are all types of different edge rushers across the NFL and college football, but often not many have the versatility and skill set of DeMarvin Leal. He can play across the line of scrimmage, and that's a huge advantage for Texas A&M and the team that does eventually draft him. Someone who can line up across the line is a hugely valuable asset. So, what does DeMarvin Leal do so well? Well, it's clearly illustrated right here against Alabama versus Evan Neal. Evan Neal's technique here is to get outside and push DeMarvin Leal away from this play to allow Najee Harris to run this gap. However, his original technique is good from Evan Neal's standpoint, and he's got him right where he wants him with his hands inside his chest. However, DeMarvin Lille does an excellent job of just bench pressing him, throwing Evan Neal with a push pull, and now he's about this ability to disrupt a play. And Najee Harris is about here. So now, all of a sudden, he goes from being absolutely locked by Evan Neal, a future first round tackle, to now being able to affect and blow up this play. Okay, so we've seen a play that defines DeMarvin Lille as a player. Before we go any further, if you wouldn't mind dropping a like right now, that would be really appreciated as I've worked pretty hard in this video and it helps boost the algorithm. Okay, so let's run the tape and let's see what he does more consistently on a play-to-play -play basis. Lille has a variety of skills. He can defend effectively against the run. Not only that, but he can be an elite pass rusher with a variety of moves. His bull rush is strong. His counter moves are effective. And on top of this, he can always seem to find a way to make a play, whether it's batting down a pass, or even intercepting it. So, that's what the tape says. What does he bring on paper? At 6'4", 290 pounds, he offers a lot from a physicality standpoint. He has the explosiveness of a defensive end and the physicality of an interior lineman. The question does remain about what he will play in the pros, whether that be interior lineman or play that defensive end role. It kind of stacks up to have him play that interior role because of his size, his ability, and his run game prowess. From a statistical standpoint, he leaves a lot to be desired. In 2019, he had 38 tackles with only two sacks. The progress in between the two years is apparent, but it's very slight, and that could be and could cause an issue. In 2020, he had 37 tackles, two and a half sacks, one forced fumble, and one interception. So, what are my main takeaways from Lille as a player? I've highlighted the upside of him previously. However, there are a few negatives, and it can affect his play. I found that especially in the Florida game, he struggled to create any outside rush moves, and instead opted for more interior base one. Occasionally, he struggled to start effectively, and wasn't always the most consistent. But once he did find that run of consistency, he would kill everything in front of him. This was apparent week six against South Carolina. He found a great run of form and had a great game. This was shown by his multitude of different rushes and his multiple QB pressures and hits during that game. With all that being said, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you did hit that subscribe button and press the like button. It is completely free and allows me to keep making these videos. Thank you all and see you guys next week.